Hey everybody. So today is May 8th. We have had the chicks seven days now. Um, I'm just about to feed them. That's why they are so loud. But I'm going to show you some stuff that we're doing now um, that, that we've had them roughly a week. Um, and then I'll give you another update on how things are going. So if you can tell, they've pretty, they soiled the bedding pretty well. So what I'm going to do is use it's like a hay fork kind of and um, kind of loosen it up a little bit and put some fresh bedding on top. So what I'm going to do here is very carefully, since the chicks are in here, is just go through and kind of loosen it up. before I put their food and fresh water back in here. All right, so in that clip, you should have seen me putting a nice um, layer of bedding on top of the old soiled bedding after I loosened it up. By loosening it up, it just helps it be not so hard and compacted. Um, I'm gonna give the ch chicks um, their food and their fresh water for today. We do still have the heat bulbs in the heat lamps, even though during the day it can get to be about 75 degrees, 80 degrees here in Minnesota. Um, at night, it's still getting down to about 40, and they're just getting the feathers on their wings um, that you'll see here. As you can see, the chicks are getting the feathers on their wings, um, and we'll probably put them outside in about a week and a half when they have most of their body feathers. But as you could tell from when I put the feed into back into the brooder, they're meat chicks. These these Cornish Cross are made to eat. They are um, genetically bred to eat and grow fast. And as you can see, they're still eating. Um, so starting this week, we will probably start taking away their food at night um, and start getting them into that rotation so that when they're out on um, the pasture, they get used to not eating at night because it's dark. Um, that way it helps prevent them from growing so fast that they eat so fast um, or they eat so much and grow so fast that ultimately they end up with a we end up with a really high mortality. So today is May what did I say eighth May eighth. <laughs> the chicks are a week old. We've had them just about a week. Um, as I mentioned in uh, the video, the chicks are here. Um, now what? 
I will link that video below if you have not seen it. Um, all of our chicks arrived. Um, alive which was awesome and we did end up with six extra chicks which our hatchery usually includes um, between five to eight depending upon what you order um, so far we have lost four chicks or five chicks um, and honestly it's mostly just because of their genetics because they these birds are bred in such a way um, and, and made genetically in such a way to grow fast. Um, so they're not always the most genetically sound birds. Um, and that's, that, that just comes with the territory. Um, as I mentioned before, you can have up to a 10% mortality rate with the Cornish cross. That's just kind of an average and not an abnormal number. Um, if you look at the scheme of things, we're still really low. We're not even at 10% yet. Right. Right. So that's just an update on um, where everybody's at, how they're doing, and how things are going at a week old. Um, keep following along so that you know what our next step is, what the next process is, and how everybody's doing. So I figured I would um, kind of combine yesterday and today's updates on the chicks for you because we decided to make some changes um, as of today. Since we've had the chicks for a week, <laughs> can you hear them? They're hungry. They're they're literally running circles looking for their food right now because they know I have it over here. We did lose another chick last night. We knew it was going to happen. Um, just wasn't looking good. But this morning everybody's looking great. Um, so fingers crossed. We keep our 100 for the most part. We might lose a couple more throughout the process. It's just like I said yesterday, the way that the Cornish cross, um, it's just their genetics. They're not sound genetics. So let me show you what we're doing with the chicks today and um, get a better look at them. So since we have so many chicks, there's still 100. Um, there's not enough feeder space in these two little feeders for all of their heads to fit in. And because when I feed them, they are so hungry all the time. Um, we decided to upgrade their feeder to this one. We'll see how one does. There should be enough space um, on one. I might put another one of those in there just for some extra feed, but we'll see how it does. See how hungry they are? They're ferocious. So I'm gonna fill um, one of those little yellow feeders just as an additional feeder for now. Over when I put this one in here. There we go. See, there's still not enough space for everybody to fit in over there. So they're starting to figure out that there's more over here. All in all, the chickens are really doing great and I'm so far, I'm very happy um, with this batch of chicks that we've gotten um, health-wise, everything like that. Um, so they are good on fresh water. They have food, so they're good until this evening um, when we do chores again. Uh, probably our next video coming out on the chicks will be on the updates that we make to the chicken tractors some modifications we're making based on some stuff that we learned last year um, on when the chickens were older, how we lost several of them, a lot of them actually, and I will will explain it to you in that video and why we're making the modifications. Um, but I hope that you enjoyed the one week update on the chicks um, and that you follow along for our next videos on our garden updates. We'll see you next time guys. Bye.